All right, good Friday morning or afternoon or whenever it is that you're watching this. This is Gary Ryan here with you with today's Fed League Flash. And we are previewing a whole litany of games that is uh, taking place uh, this weekend in the Fed. So I uh, got my all my scribbly notes here. So anyway, uh, I have to apologize real quickly. I know that these videos aren't very exciting. That you know, there's nothing, uh, no real optics with this for the most part. Um, it's baby steps. Uh, maybe next season, um, I'll start doing like a pre-recording or something that's a little bit more visibly pleasing, other than just looking at my ugly mug all day. But uh, anyway, I, I'm just right now going off of content. My intention is to give you everything in 15 minutes or less. So hence the name Fed League Flash. Uh, anyway, okay, so we're going to start with the series that are taking place. Uh, first one, very exciting one, I think. I think this is going to be the matchup of the weekend. Motor City and Port Huron playing a home and home. And uh, this is for all the marbles. Well, not all the marbles. It's for the marbles that is third place in the Continental Division. Uh, right now, Motor City is 86 points, sitting in third place. Mo uh, Port Huron is in fourth with 79 points. Uh, and this series, yeah, they've played each other a bunch of times. It's going to be 16 games all told. So far, they're seven and seven. So, uh, and things are pretty even. Motor City has outscored Port Huron by a mere two goals cumulatively in those fourteen games. So, uh, yeah, they're they're. This is going to be really exciting. Friday night, seven oh five. That's tonight, and tomorrow, six o'clock. Um, Leading scorer for Motor City is Scott Coash, 34 goals and 62 points. On the other side, you have Dalton Jay uh, with 32 goals and 66 points for the Prowlers. And in that, it looks like it's going to be Trevor Babin, uh, 3.16 goals against, 9.15 save percentage against Wyatt Hofflin. He's got a 4.46 and 8.68. Save percentage. Uh, don't let the numbers fool you. When Hofflin gets hot, he gets hot. Uh, anyway, so if uh, the Rockers manage to sweep the series, win both games in regulation time, uh, regulation wins, they will clinch third seed. But if you know the team split or you know Motor City doesn't get two regulation wins, the fight goes on for another week. Uh, three weeks left in the series season, so. Uh, it's going to be an exciting one. That is my pick of the week, uh, the game to watch for the week. Well, the pair of games, actually, because it's Friday and Saturday. Uh, a three-game series taking place between the Mississippi Seawolves and the Carolina Thunderbirds. And this one is not as evenly matched. Uh, Mississippi sitting in last, uh, already officially eliminated from the playoffs, Carolina. They're trying to see if maybe they can wrestle away first place from the Columbus River Dragons, uh, but they'd uh, have to pretty much either win out or get a lot of help. Uh, but right now, uh, we got Mississippi, who has been pretty decent as of late, 6-4 and four in their last 10, taking on Carolina, who's also 6-4 and four in their last 10. We've got three games, 7.35 tonight, 6.05 on Saturday, 4.05 on Sunday. These games taking place at the Annex in Winston-Salem. Uh, so far, head-to-head, -head, uh, Carolina holds a decided edge, 9-2, to two, uh, nine games to two, and Carolina has outscored Mississippi 70-36. to 36. Um some of those games were early in the season. Uh, I believe the second time they met, it was an 11 to two washout, um, just things like that. But uh, and Mississippi really struggled early on. Um, of course, you've got the uh, <laughs> the two that are tied for second in points right now in the league: Yaroslav Yevdokimov, 
Still my favorite name in the Fed. Uh, 47 goals, 86 points. Yanni Lariakos has chipped in 24 goals and a huge amount of assists, 86 points. Um, Gus Ford on the other side, not available for Friday's game. Uh, he is serving a one-game suspension, but uh, he'll be back for the other two, no doubt. 43 goals, 63 assists, 106 points. He is by far the leading scorer in the FPHL. And surprisingly, John Butita has now uh, risen in the ranks on Carolina. He's the number two scorer now, 68 points, 55 assists. So he his big focus is playmaking, um, looking for the open man. And he very often succeeds. Goals, uh, goaltenders, Blake Weyrich, um, probably going to be getting the lion's share of starts. Uh, he's 4'10 and 2, 529 goals against, an 852 save percentage, not great numbers, but again, a lot of those um, lower totals are because of the rough start Mississippi got uh, early on. They've been playing pretty decent as of late. Mario Cavalier, uh, no word yet on if he will be back this weekend. He is the number one goalie for Carolina. Uh, 21 wins, 295 goals against, a 913 save percentage. Uh, but of course, they also have Boris Babic and Greg Hussey. If for some, well, they don't have Hussey <laughs> on, on uh, Friday. He's also serving a suspension. But uh, anyway, uh, Carolina is pretty solid in goal. Uh, nine points are up for grabs. Carolina right now trails Columbus by seven. So things are getting pretty tight right now in the Continental Division. Uh, the other series is a Saturday and Sunday series. This is the Delaware Thunder and the Watertown Wolves. Delaware doesn't have much to play for except for pride. And... Um, Fans are going to be very excited uh, that now that Trevor Martin is back, and I'm not being sarcastic about that. Uh, Delaware follows their team, win, lose, draw. Uh, they they love their Thunder, and uh, you can bet that they are going nuts once they got the news that Trevor Martin was heading back. Uh, Kozlowski did great uh, in Martin's absence, so now they got a really good tandem. Uh, despite the team not doing too well. Watertown, of course, trying to cement their uh, playoff spot. They're trying to get that third seed. Uh, they're 18, 27, and 3, 52 points. Uh, both teams have been struggling as of late. Delaware is 2 and 8 in their last 10. Watertown, 2, 7, and 1. Um, Denis Grafarov, of course, continues to lead the Thunder with scoring 26 goals and 48 points. And now that Parker Moscow is no longer with the Wolves, the leading scorer is Elijah Wilson for the Wolves. Uh, 17 goals, 40 assists. Uh, Trevor Martin, of course. Uh, now, these numbers sound really bad. 424 and 2 with a 524 goals against average. But again, consider um, <laughs> consider the team. Um, he's got an 872 save percentage, which is phenomenal considering how he gets peppered with shots night in and night out. Um, on the other side, Owen Liskovitz has been very steady and solid in goal for the Wolves. 389 uh, goals against and 897 save percentage. Head-to-head, uh, -head, Watertown has taken three of the four games, and uh, Watertown has 20, 25 goals to Delaware's 15. So those are the three series taking place. Now there's uh, uh, some games on Friday taking place, which is just one and done. Elmira traveling to Binghamton. Uh, Elmira in fourth, Binghamton in second. Binghamton is locked into that second spot. Um, they're, they're finishing second no matter what. Um, head to head, Binghamton has a seven games to one lead. Uh, Binghamton's outscored Elmira 45 to 19. Uh, Tate, Tate Leeson is Elmira's leading scorer, 18 goals, 38 points. And of course, Tyler Jurich leads the way for the Black Bears, 28 goals, 60 points. And the watch is on. One more goal. And Tyler Jurich is the king of FPHL goal scorers, passing Ahmed Mafuz. Right now, both are tied at 295 total. And uh, if Jurich doesn't get it 
tonight. Uh, he's been he's going to get it before the end of the year. All right, so uh, that's at seven o'clock tonight at Binghamton, uh, Delaware. Tonight is traveling to Danbury, and they are taking on the first place uh, Hat Tricks. Hat Tricks cemented their number one seed. Uh, that's at seven thirty tonight. And uh, head-to-head, Danbury swept the series so far. Eight games, all Danbury. Uh, 49 to 23 is the goal differential uh, in the head-to-head meetings. Um, it was a curious note that I, I made, and I just put a little asterisk, uh, or asterisk, excuse me. We have not seen Justin uh, uh, Dustin Dussault since um, about a month ago when they were playing in Watertown. Um, so that's been very curious about that. Um, so I don't know. We will see. Uh, needless to say, though, uh, Danbury is still stacked. Uh, they got Johnny Ruiz leading the way with 23 goals and 56 points. Uh, Brian Wilson, uh, solid as a rock in net, uh, 26, five and five, 275 goals against and nine eighteen save percentage. Um, as far as the fed goes, uh, Brian Wilson can kind of wear that Darren Poopa nickname all world. Um, all right. The other game that is going on tonight is the Columbus River Dragons traveling to Watertown. Uh, Watertown plays tonight against Columbus, and then they'll play the two against Delaware. Uh, Columbus, 37-9-4, and 4, 108 points, first in the Continental Division, 6-3-1 uh, in their last 10. Uh, head-to-head, they've only met twice, and Columbus has won both games, uh, eight goals to two uh, in those two contests, so it hasn't been like huge blowouts or anything like that. Kelly Jacob, the leading scorer for the River Dragons, 37 goals, 67 points altogether. Uh, The team has a 106 plus goal differential number right now. Insane. And of course, the goalie is... Brandon Colgan, 19, 6 and 2, a 227 goals against, seven shutouts. All right. And then Saturday, the other pair of, or the other couple of games that are going on that are not a part of a series, uh, after taking on the uh, Thunder tonight, Danbury will tra- travel to Elmira, uh, 635 tomorrow night. And uh, again, Danbury has been perfect. Seven and zero against the Mammoth, thirty-eight to sixteen in goals. And then the last Saturday game is the River Dragons after they have taken on the Wolves. They travel to Binghamton, and uh, at seven o'clock Saturday. And uh, so far. Uh, Binghamton hasn't had a problem really with Columbus so far. Both games that they played earlier this year went to overtime. Both teams had a one goal victory. So um, three points apiece, six goals apiece. Uh, That's about as even as you can get. So uh, Binghamton, in spite of their recent struggles, uh, they're feeling pretty confident, I think. Uh, with the prospects of taking on Columbus in their building. So that is everything that's going on this weekend for the Fed. Tomorrow, of course, we will review uh, everything that took place in tonight's games. So make sure to tune in for that. And I'll even have the old little whiteboard with me. Uh, So a little bit of a more relaxed and uh, visually pleasing scenario, a a setting. All right. I am Gary Ryan. Thank you so much for watching the Fed League Flash. Remember, of course, we're on here every day except for Wednesdays. Um, Make sure to hit like and subscribe. Tell me in uh, the comments below who you think is going to win. Do you think do you think Motor City is going to clinch third or do you think that uh, the the season's still going to go on a little bit longer for Port Huron as far as a chance to get that higher seed? All right, let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And we will catch you guys uh, at the games tonight and on this channel right here tomorrow. Take care.